guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. And yes, you are staring at blankness. This week's video is different, so I want to do the intro differently. My exams just finished and I was obviously taking notes in notebooks, but there was a problem. My notebooks, they look really bad. Every time I tried to study, it would annoy me. And not just one notebook, not two notebooks, but three notebooks. Every time I would open any of these studies, half the time my mind would be on, yikes, these look so bad. And then at some point, sometime, I sealed off this layer of plastic from the job and it left this really bad residue that was annoying me even further. So I decided the second my exam finished, I will fix this. I decided that I should do it on YouTube and show you guys some ideas on how ideas for diaries and how I do mine. Because I've been collecting diaries for since I thought it was fine, which is kind of awkward. <laughs> and also, along with this, I want to do one plain cardboard diary sketchbook kind of thing. I got these and they're new and I wanted to try it out. And I, I like the effect of paint on cardboard. And also, all of these are super easy, so don't require no artistic talent at all. Anyone can do them, and it's all the things from around your house. It's not like you need special supplies in a multiple. Like, substitutions that you can use so you don't need to get anything from outside like fancy things that you don't need to get Starting with making them white because you have to work on a white surface so let's go. The first way to do so is simply gessoing it or putting a layer of white paint. The second way is using a piece of paper and wrapping it up like a present. Both of these are super simple ways to do it if you don't have paint, use paper. If you don't have paper, use paint. And if you want to preserve these, you you don't need anything super fancy like Mod Podge or I don't know how many different types of varnishes there are out there. You can just use simple thick transparent tape. I have like three or four diaries that I've made. And they've one that I made back in 2018 is still in one piece. The covers the, it hasn't faded. Here we have all three covered, two of them I did with gesso, the ones on the sides and the one in the middle is with paper. If you want to work with markers, you go for the paper. If you want to work with paint, I suggest the gesso. Let's start with our first one. And because I wanted to be fancy, I was using Fosca pens, which is basically paint in pens. Here you can, if you don't have Fosca pens, which are really difficult to find where I live, um, you can use normal acrylic paint with a brush, which is a great alternative. I mean, it's literally the same thing. It's not really an alternative, it's the same thing. You can use acrylic paint or if you want, you can cover your book with paper and use markers. Or if you want, you can even use color pencils, but you just have to cover it over with the tape so that it doesn't get spoiled or faded. My strategy for this one was simply a simple nice picture and then a quote under it, which I've done a second time as well in my next one. But it's a really simple, easy technique, and it looks really pretty. I've seen really expensive diaries online, and they cost so much, and it's really actually quite basic. It shouldn't be worth that much. And I've probably my second Instagram post was of these diaries I handmade myself. Some of them still survive today. I'm surprised, but they do. And diaries are something that are so much fun. I use so many of them all the time. So if you're looking, this is my second one. This is actually my science notebook, if I'm not wrong. So which is why there's the beaker. It was totally unintentional, but I guess it just happened. This one is similar to the watermelon, only it's slightly bit more complicated. Tiny bit. It has more objects and things around. There is a coat as well, just like the watermelon, so like, more or less the same thing. Similar techniques and same materials as well. I noticed that to make these diaries, you just need literally three things. Paint, paper, and brushes. And you, you're good to go, it's just three things.
can have fun with the colors, do whatever colors you want, do whatever designs you want. These are just a few to get you started. There are so many endless possibilities for diaries. You can have small ones, large ones, pink ones, blue ones, purple ones. Ones with some with quotes, some with drawings, some with sketches. It's it's really I'm not even kidding. Endless. And there's so many cute diaries out there. Am I the only one obsessed with diaries? Because I I have definitely way more than I need. And I I can insist on wanting more. And probably the only thing that I've used them for is where I've written my name on the first page and my age at that particular time. I have diaries with that have written This belongs to me age seven or even age six. I'm sorry if this video is really long, it's just that I wanted to cover a lot and it wasn't getting any shorter. Let's move to the next one, the Freak Shake. This one I was, this is probably my favorite because I love the effect that the brown gave and also Freak Shakes are yummy. I mean, I've never had one, but I've painted them, they look delicious. Assuming they are. And they're such fun desserts, you can do anything with them. You can add macarons, you can add donuts, you can add cupcakes, you can add anything on a Freak Shake and it'll look alright. Like this one, it's Pink Shake with whipped cream, three macarons, which definitely wouldn't generally fit on a sh shake. And then strawberries, che a cherry, on top of some whipped cream with wafers, this, or straw, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's interesting. Freak shakes are really like an imaginative dessert, which is, I mean, okay, it's not imaginative. People actually have it, but I've never had it, so for me, it's imaginative and it's fun. And also, the, this one, this one is the one that takes kind of a medium amount of time. It didn't, it wasn't as quick as the other two. It took slightly longer, I guess. And maybe this might require a bit of an artistic skill level because it's realism ish, I guess. But it gives a very aesthetic feel to the diary. If you want, you can cover your diaries or notebooks or whatever in brown paper. If you don't have brown paper, you can use brown paper bags you can just cover that in a brown paper bag use that instead I don't want anybody going out to get special stuff to make notebooks you don't need to do that everything is generally at home you don't have that you can use old newspaper even that gives an amazing look you can use old newspaper to make these things I don't find why people on the internet make it really complicated it'd be like you need much you need a holly glue gun you need an iron you need plastic stuff it, it gets very annoying to see people do that when in fact it is so easy if you want I can do a separate video on how to do a proper freak shake if you guys want me to this one I'm focusing less on the freak shake more on the diary because here the idea I want to give is you can do something realistic on the diary cover too it can be of any sort, really. It's just a matter of what you personally want. Who invented freak shakes? That's a question. Who actually thought of you have your shake, then you put more frosting on it, then you pile on more stuff on it? Because I've seen freak shakes that are really, really complicated. They have donuts and macaroons and God knows what else on them. Who came up with this idea? It's a cool idea. They're probably the most sugar-loaded desserts ever. I mean, you have cake, you have donuts, you have macarons, you have 
cream, all of it in one, that's gonna be high amounts of sugar. I don't know if you guys noticed but throughout the video I change a lot of hoodies I have black sleeves then I have blue ones then I have red ones and I have yellow sleeves over the entire I it took me a whole day to film this because I was being very lazy and I didn't want to film it all in one go so I would do one diary then I'd be like oh let's chill and watch a movie come back film another diary and then the, then come back then the next day I it, I actually filmed this the next day it took me a whole day to get the first two done me being lazy and all then I did this the next day the last one actually took the longest the last one's probably the most interesting and it has the most purpose out of these three four it has the most purpose and it's very useful during long lessons so if you want to see something that's useful during long lessons watch it till the end trust me it's really funny kind of it's quite useful not gonna lie it, it is so useful <laughs> My friends, some of them, if, you, if they're watching, they even know that I've done this sitting in the back of a classroom. So, if you guys are curious, watch till the end. You'll know what I mean. Anyway, back to the freak shake. It took me some time because it's watercolors and it's realism. So, the two of them combined create a whole lot of time. If you don't want to do this in realism, you can do it in cartoony form too if you wish. That's what I'm just trying to say. Do what you want. I'm trying to put some ideas out there to think so that you guys can think of your own. That's the point here. I'm not trying to force anybody to do anything. Painting on brown paper is fun. It's a different color to work on and you get obviously get different shades and shadows and tints and you, you feel the effect of the whole thing. And it gives a rustic effect. Or you can like if it's something like this you get the effect that yeah, it's in a shop. It's like you get that I, I, I don't know how to you can say mood. Mood is something you'd say in literature and I just had a literature exam. You you can call it the mood I guess. It just changes the whole picture and I really like that effect. Maybe I'll try a video later on on using different types of paper because that's a really fun thing to do. So I think we're about done with this, just outlining. I think it looks really nice. This is probably my favorite. Uh, now for the next one. This one is... Okay. Just a tip, this is something you can do sitting in the back of your lessons in school during a boring lesson and you can easily do this because it'll look like you're doing some really hard work sitting there when in fact you're doing a, a journal, notebook, diary, whatever, cover page. This is called Zentangle Art. Zentangle Art is basically, or you can, okay, Zentangle Art is too complicated. Let's call it Doodle Art, which is what I call it. Doodle art is basically just random things thrown on a paper with black ink. It could not be simpler. You can draw for anything you want. Like here I've stuffed on some cupcakes, flowers, arrows, cherries, an emoji, a dream catcher, a couple of emojis actually, feathers, scar, there's everything. There's a scarf in here for God's sake. If eventually in the end product, I'm sorry, I probably confused you. This is that's in the end product, but you can have it. This one is the paper. So if this is your cover notebook cover page, you're sitting in the back of an, a boring lesson, or even if it's not at the back, because you're not going to school anymore, 
if you're doing online school and your camera's supposed to be on and you're supposed to look like you're really hard at work taking notes, when in fact you already understood the topic and you're just like bored, just you can be drawing on the cover of your notebook. I'm not saying please do please pay attention in class. Don't don't not pay attention. Do what your teacher wants you to do. Don't don't waste time like this. But if you like understood the topic and you're bored and the teacher it's taking a really long time to explain something to someone else, which happens very often. You can just take out your notebook and... You know how people doodle in class when they're bored? Just doodle, but on the front cover. Make your notebook cover look really nice, too. My friends know that I doodle at the back... Like, not at the back, but I draw while I'm in class, and it's usually this kind of work. I have... I've posted one of these types of things on Instagram. And... Uh, it's fun, it's just anything thrown on the paper. And when I say anything, I mean anything. Like random blobs become stuff. And you just fill them up with design. I actually had to cut a lot of the process out because the video would probably have been a good hour long at least. And I didn't want to keep you guys stuck here that long. I haven't, I am merciful enough. So there were times when I would just do it off camera because sitting and doing it for like a long time at one stretch was just impossible for me this is something to be done over a period of time like over a bunch of a few lessons or over time it's not something you do in a one go it's not this is why this one took the longest because i was doing it in the night for probably an hour then the next day as well for probably another two hours so it took probably took like three hours okay that's a lot maybe two and a half three is too much probably an approximate of two and a half hours to do this it's something to do when you're bored and the pro thing the good thing about this is you you can make any mistakes and the final product is so like crammed in and full that nobody gets to look at those mistakes like the arrow, the inside swirly thingy. If you notice, it's a mess. It's literally a total mess. I don't even know what that is. But it it gets covered up. Nobody gets to focus on that thing. And when you look at it, you can't really focus on anything because it's just so stuffed with stuff. My brother gets dizzy looking at stuff like this because he's like, there's nothing to focus on. I'm going to get dizzy. That's why mistakes don't matter when it comes to this. You can just do whatever you want. And it'll work. If you guys want me to do a separate video on doodling, and if, I mean, there's no no really technique to it, but. If you want me to explain it further, I can do a separate video on it. If you want to do, to do a separate video on anything in this video, because it's kind of this video is a compilation of multiple things. If you want me to do that, then I can. Just tell me in the comments below. Like it. You can even send me in a message on Instagram. You can DM me. I'm leaving my you, uh, the, 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 the link. The link is down in the description. <laughs> As are all the materials, colors, everything that I've used, that's all down there in this, this, the, the, the description. What's wrong with me? It's currently the next day and it, I'm still working on the same thing. It's just took really long. Most of it was done off camera. Hey, are you doing another video? Yep. Oh. Clearly he doesn't like it. Here we're almost done with the thing. It's almost completed. Took a lot of time. This is definitely something to do when you're bored because when you're bored you have nothing to do. 
just do this. It's mindless. There's everything. You can see the emoji, the two emojis, the sleeping emoji. There's the weird tongue sticking out winky face emoji. There's feathers. There's a, a horribly colored in star. There's wings. There's zigzaggy lines. There's every A key. There's a key there. I don't even remember making that. Hey, there's a key there. It's, it, I'm, there's no perfection in doodling. This is anything that comes in your head just on paper. Just put it there. Nobody cares. It's just there. Gun depends on taste again. Be like, we're done. Yay, finally. Here are all three finished sketchbooks. Not sketchbooks. Notebooks. Now at least I won't be totally bothered while taking notes. The brown one is probably my favorite. Comment down below which one is your favorite and which one you are most likely to try out. Like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe.